we are going to be looking at the basics of chemistry and this is in the aesthetics chapter number seven before diving into the chapter itself we're going to take a look at the overview of the topics which we are going to be covering as well as look at the terminologies that are used and we're going to find these key terms and the third thing that we want to do before we get into the chapter is that go at the end of the chapter here and take a look at these review questions which uh, at least to some extent kind of in our mind begin to uh, structure out what we're going to be looking at uh, when we uh, cover the chapter in detail. So let's get started uh, with the overall introduction. When we talk about uh, chemistry, the chapter will eventually lead to its direct impact on the cosmetics as related to our aesthetic field. It uh, does talk about solutions, suspensions, emulsions, uh, and uh, how those things are impacted in the lotions that we use. Uh, it does talk about surfactants that are used in those lotions, and those could be oil in water relationships. Those are the emulsions that are created or water in oil. Uh, type of uh, environment that is uh, emulsions as well and uh, so while before it talks about that as well as it talks about our pH which we know that pH is very critical in skin care and being cautious of uh, the relationship of uh, acids and uh, alkalis that is uh, the basics basics basis that we use in skin care the the second concept that uh, is critical to aesthetics field is the concept of pH and pH is a measure of the acidity or the um, alkalinity or alkalis or alkalinity of a compound and we know that pH has a direct impact on uh, has a direct impact on the bio uh, has a direct biological impact and so a pH and skin care products is a under good understanding and so we do need to The second concept that we will be covering is the is important to an esthetician is the pH and how pH is the measure of the acidity or the alkalinity of a compound or the substance that we use and that directly uh, pH does impact the skincare products line and uh, and how we can uh, test those pH in uh, certain products. But before we ever get to these topics and uh, we need a rudimentary fundamental concepts of what chemistry is. In chemistry, the concept uh, begins with matter. Matter is anything that we can uh, touch, uh, touch, feel, uh, and uh, that has mass. Okay, so those things are uh, what we define as matter. The another thing is it takes up uh, some form of space. So those are important concepts uh, in understanding ma matter. But understanding matter begins with uh, two things. First is atom and atoms uh, when they come together make what molecules so this concept is important uh, beginning of understanding of matter 
So just a basic overview, atoms has a nucleus in it. So if this is the center part of the atom, we do have electrons that are running around in a circular path, in somewhat of a circular path, around the nucleus. It's kind of, if you think about a planetary, uh, ex uh, our planets, uh, how s the moon revolves around the earth uh, or, or the earth revolves around the sun. Uh, electrons have their orbitals as well around the nucleus. So th that's that's basically the con uh, concept of atoms. And let's take atoms and we have several different either several different types of atoms or the same kind of atoms and let's if we bind them together more than one atom coming together that becomes a molecule. Now the concept of elements the, the different types of atoms that we have, like for example, if we have an oxygen, uh, oxygen or nitrogen, carbon, those types of atoms that we have uh, are what we call as elements. So we will look at a element chart that defines different types of atoms. And then we'll look at how those atoms come together and share their electrons. And so when sharing their electrons, they make molecules. Another concept of matter is the state of matter. And so When we talk about state of matter, there's three of them. And first one is called solid. Second one is called liquid. And third is gas. So an example of solid would be ice. Ice. Ice, if it melts, uh, goes to a second state of matter which is uh, becomes a water basically um, or liquid water I would say because even ice is water frozen I uh, frozen uh, water and then uh, and then when we have steam it becomes a form of gas so uh, water takes on three states which is solid, liquid, and gas as well. And so those are the uh, states of matter. We will talk about some physical and chemical properties of matter, and then physical and chemical changes uh, that are not just a uh, solid, liquid, gas, but they could, uh, these solid, liquid, gas is physical changes then we will talk about chemical changes as well. Let's take a look at our review questions. And the review first question and that we first question is define uh, chemistry. In chemistry, uh, we will take a look at a number of concepts, but it begins with the second question, that is, what is the difference between organic and inorganic chemistry? We hear this terminology being used a lot, that organic is something that's related to natural products, and uh, the inorganic in comparison or in contrast to that is that stuff that uh, has no uh, previous life form in it. So this is based on life forms and this is based on non-living matter as well. But we will go more into detail about that. Then something that we've already discussed to some extent and it talks about matter. And so the three states of matter, again, are listed here, which is solid, liquid, 
and gases. And the question is, what are the difference between solids, liquids, and uh, gases? And so uh, number five is define elements. And then the next question is atoms. What are atoms? Well, uh, elements are uh, sort of a category, you might say, because we will look at a what element, element, elemental uh, chart. And that will define different types of atoms. And for example, we'll have a nitrogen, hydrogen, or oxygen atoms as well. And then something we already talked about, which is that atoms, when they come together, uh, will form in some form of a bond, will result in what? Molecule. And so, this is the sort of the fundamentals of chemistry. Uh, then we begin to take a look at what is the difference between a chemical compound and physical mixture. So we will shift into, after talking about these basics, we will shift into mixtures. And they there we will see uh, what is a physical uh, properties uh, of uh, certain compounds and uh, certain mixtures as well as the chemical properties. And so we will begin to dis distinguish between physical properties and chemical properties. So the, again, the ba that's what the question is based on. What are physical properties and how are they different from chemical properties? Then uh, drawing back to the concept of matter, uh, the question is how can matter be changed? Well, anything uh, can be changed in two ways. One is you can have physical change. Uh, something that we did talk about here, which is water, uh, can have solid state, can have a liquid state, and can have gaseous, st gaseous state. And those are what we call as physical. Uh, physical. Physical change. And that's the first kind of change. The second change can is chemical. So chemical change, what chemical change is, uh, that uh, certain uh, uh, compounds or certain uh, mixtures will result in uh, things that will not only just mix together, but will actually react. And once they react, you, not, you have chemical change in that. So when we say, how can matter be changed? Give an example of each kind of change. Uh, we Again, just did that, which is physical change and uh, chemical change. Uh, talk about going back to elemental chart. Elemental uh, chart. Uh, we look at different types of atoms. And so we will take a look at different types of atoms here. Hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And that's what uh, the question is saying. Describe what hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Now, if we, uh, in this case, we take two uh, molecules of hydrogen, which is H2, uh, becomes a uh, form of a gas. If we take O and combine it with O, we get O2. Again, that's a molecule. I, I, what I meant to say was that these are molecules. So, and these are atoms, individual atoms, and they're molecules as well. So when we talk about hydrogen, we could be talking about different atoms, or we could be talking about different molecules as well. And same same uh, thing with nitrogen. You can have a nitrogen atom, but if it's bonded to another nitrogen, what do you get? And two gas. You get two of those. And so then let's continue looking at uh, some of the other questions. So we... How is water important to skin care? And uh, just uh, because we are in the ch chemistry chapter, we want to talk about what water is. Wa another form of water is H2O. And uh, if we want to take a look at expanded view of that, we have an oxygen 
and oxygen has certain uh, uh, certain uh, electrons around it, but then one of uh, two are bonded to a hydrogen, and another one is uh, bonded to another hydrogen. So you have a bond here, as well as a bond, and some free electrons here. Uh, and so this is what we call two of these, and then one of oxygen. So that's our uh, chemical formula. This is our chemical structure of what a water looks like. And it's just good to know that while we are in the uh, chemistry chapter. Another concept that we get into is this define uh, pH. And then how do we, how, how do you need, I'm sorry, why do you need to know pH of a product you work with? And so the products uh, have a certain pH. And are they healthy for the skin level of pH? And so those are co important concepts for any aesthetician uh, to understand. Then a uh, question comes up, define oxidation and reduction. And so oxidation, the process of oxidation and reduction. And it's important to understand those because we do... Uh, talk about uh, antioxidants. You know, very important for us to understand in, in the uh, skincare lines as well. Uh, and our nutrition value of certain things, uh, they're called antioxidants. And so what are they doing? And this is, they are redu there's reducing agents and oxidizing agents. And what is the meaning of them? Uh, there's a also a relationship with uh, I'm sorry, relationship. There is also a relationship between oxidation and reduction where it those two uh, forms of uh, chemical reactions happen at the same time. Those are uh, called redox. Okay, so uh, RE and then uh, RED and then OX from oxygen. So that combined together becomes redox. So another terminology that we do need to uh, focus on. Then uh, question number 15, explain the differences between solutions, suspensions, and emulsions. <coughs> and then uh, the other questions are uh, related to that. We have what are the two types of emulsion products uh, used in skin care? So explain the structure of the two types of emulsion products used in skin care. And those are in here, uh, in is oil in water, and then water in oil forms of emulsions. And it's important to understand those concepts. And in the last section of our overview, we do want to take a look at chapter introduction. We have our learning objectives and uh, some of it re we reviewed in the discussion questions. But uh, learning objectives is define chemistry and its branches. And there are two of them, which is organic and inorganic chemistry. Then explain matter and its structure. Uh, those are basically uh, atoms and molecules. And then we have matter has uh, various states. So, and that's what the next question is. Our next learning objective, discuss the properties of matter and how matter changes. So the changes that we are going to be, uh, first of all, properties, we can talk about states of matter. Uh, and, uh, but then the properties are chemical and physical properties as well. And then how can matter change? Well, they can change uh, through its various states, uh, like solid, liquid, gas, or it can go through a uh, chemical change as well. So we'll discuss that in our reading. Then lesson objective four, understand how acid, alkaline, and pH affect the skin. So pH is a measure of the acidity or the alkalinity uh, of a compound or a substance and that directly impacts the skin. Skin itself has a pH 
uh, at, as that it keeps itself at. And, uh, and we will take a look at acid mantle in that, uh, for that purposes. A lesson objective five, explain pH and a m way of measuring that pH, and that is the pH scale. Uh, then sh uh, lesson objective six, explain the difference among solutions, suspensions, and emulsions. Now we do have a long list of key terms. It's important to just uh, do a mental check on that. And so let's do that. Um, uh, first of all, we will talk about acid mantle, which is a part of the skin's defensive uh, mechanism. Then we have uh, acid alkali uh, neutralization reactions. And that is uh, alkali and acid and their relationship with one another. Something is acidic, opposite of that, or the end on the other direction of the pH the scale we are looking at alkali and then if they are combined in certain uh, percentages or a certain relationship then they will result in neutralization uh, and that is either around pH 7 and so acids uh, again we do talk about acids then another letter another uh, words that starts with letter A is air uh, and air it has a combination of certain nitrogen and oxygen. It's not a pure oxygen. So, and we will talk about that in, in that relationship. Let's just click on it and see what it says. The gaseous, 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 gaseous uh, mixture that makes up the Earth's atmosphere. It is odorless, color, colorless, and generally consists of about one part oxygen and four part nitrogen by volume and that's why we're going to be talking about air uh, in, in what percentage is oxygen and stating that it's not uh, pure oxygen but does have a ni nitrogen in it as well alkalis or that is bases uh, we do talk about anions that's another word to uh, no, the op uh, the other aspect of that, or the contrary to that, is cation. So, uh, what is an anion, and what is cation? Okay, those are two uh, related uh, terminology. We do talk about antioxidants. Yeah, a good, uh, important concept to for us to understand, uh, and then atoms. Atoms is part of the matter. We do talk about, uh, we're skipping cations. We already talked about that as a relationship to anion. Uh, do talk about chemical change and then chemical compounds, chemical properties, and then overview of chemistry. Uh, do talk about combustion. Combustion is things where the oxygen comes in and uh, ignites. Uh, so heat is there and it's a uh, uh, flames uh, come forth and that is uh, oxygen plays a huge part in that combust combustion reaction. And so that's something that uh, is going to be important for us to understand as well. Uh, and then we have compound molecules. And uh, that comes under the concept of compounds. We do have uh, element, and we know that there is about 90 different elements uh, th uh, that we'll look at on the elemental chart. Then elemental molecules, uh, those are the molecules that are purely one type of element. So it could be uh, two molecules of oxygen uh, will make up O2, which is the air, part of the air that we breathe and uh, the oxygen and so that's called an elemental molecule emulsions part of our uh, oil in water or water in oil types of emulsions i do talk about free radical and uh, talks about uh, uh, those that will then cause uh, oxidation reactions and that's why we take antioxidants to get rid of those free radicals important part of the oxygen uh, do talk about gases. Uh, that's gas is one form of uh, the state of matter. 
uh, then hydrogen, uh, hydrogen peroxide, uh, hydrophilic. The word philic is loving. So hydro means water loving. And that's where the, the concept of emulsions comes in, hydrophilic. And the, uh, the contrary or a, a related concept is lipophilic. So lipo means uh, oil loving. So we do have that concept of hydrophilic and lipophilic. Emissible, the, uh, sorry, yeah, hydro, uh, hydroxide. Uh, and then we have immiscible with something that's uh, mixed you can mix together or immiscible uh, oh this, okay so there's miscible and then immiscible in a concept there and immiscible means it doesn't uh, if you put it in something it will not mix so uh, in organic chemistry ions ionization then uh, we already talked about lipophilic in relationship to hydrophilic liquids logarithmic scale and that logarithmic scale uh, plays the role in the pH scale that we will be taking a look at uh, and it uses a logarithmic scale to measure the hydrogen uh, ion concentration and that's what pH is so that's where that concept comes in then we have basic concept of matter and then as we talked about immiscible here we talk about miscible things uh, two uh, um, two substances that will mix together are miscible then we have molecule uh, nitrogen then when we talk about emulsion we do have our oil in water uh, e emulsion as compared to water and oil emulsion as well then we have organic chemistry oxidation oxidation reduction then we talk about things that have oxidized like if uh, iron gets oxidized by rain water because uh, water does have that oxygen in it uh, then we say that it's been oxidized and we get uh, uh, rust that's the oxidation uh, of iron will result in rust and uh, so then we have oxygen that uh, does oxidize things pH something we've talked about pH scale and uh, physical change physical mixtures physical properties then uh, we did talk about oxidation reduction and related term is redox which is uh, oxidation and reduction things happening at the same time so we have redox reaction then we reduction by itself uh, solids solute solutions solvent states of matter and we know there are three solid liquid and gas then surfactants are uh, come under emulsions emulsifiers and uh, surfactants and suspensions then we have water and then water and oil emulsions okay so uh, let's conclude with this thought on at, the, at this introduction as an esthetician you will be working with chemistry every day as you will see chemistry one of the physical sciences along with the chemicals and chemical changes makes life on earth possible the daily functioning of our bodies is based on chemical reactions the skin is made up of chemicals so creams lotions masks and makeup uh, whether they come from the natural sources such as plant extracts or from ingredients manufactured in a laboratory are made from uh, chemicals so the effects of cosmetics and skincare products are based on how the skin reacts to chemicals to understand how different chemicals affect the skin and to choose the correct products and cosmetics for each client's skin type, estheticians must have a basic knowledge of a chemistry. Why study chemistry? Estheticians need to understand basic chemistry as it is 
crucial in performing services safely, effectively, and with best results for clients. So without an understanding of the basic chemistry, you would not be able to use professional products effectively and safely. So uh, when you are either using or selling or developing, uh, concepts of chemistry will play a very, very important role, uh, especially those that measure pH, uh, alkalinity, acidity of products and how those impact the skin. And uh, th those ideas are very, very important. Every product used in the salon and spa and in skincare services contains some type of chemical. Um, that's just so basic. Uh, of course, we know that everything is, is a chemistry. Uh, with an understanding of chemistry, you will be able to layer products in services and know how the skin may react with products and services so if there's certain literature that you're reading certain concept that you're reading um, then you will be able to um, uh, understand how uh, that uh, those concepts work uh, with your basics of uh, chemistry with the understanding of chemistry you will be able to troubleshoot and solve common problems you may encounter it with aesthetic uh, services. So uh, as you're prescribing or uh, introducing new concepts to uh, clients you know, or your team members or uh, maybe to a company for sales, uh, you'll be able to at least have some fundamental concepts that uh, you will be able to relate to them uh, and uh, communicate those concepts. So with that, uh, we will uh, draw a conclusion to our introduction here and then uh, pick up as we go into more detail.